Thank you very much for allowing me to present my research. Today I'll talk about single molecule observation of amyloid aggregation by using high-speed atomic force microscopy, high-speed FM. First, I would like to discuss the motivation for my research in this area, including some brief background. Then I would like to present some features of high-speed FM in the amyloid research field as well as some of our own and other groups' high-speed FM studies. As you know, amyloid pr protein aggregation causes a variety of serious diseases. Many researchers have been studying how soluble proteins form insoluble fibrils, which leads to cytotoxicity. My interest in this area is the correlation between the steric structure of aggregates and the pathology and phenotypes. The skill of this relationship has been very well studied in the prion model yeast protein, yeast sub-35. Sub-35 normally acts as a translation termination factor. Together with sub-45. The yeast used here has a nonsense mutation in the ADE1 gene, an enzyme in the metabolic pathway that synthesizes a nucleic acid base and adenine. Normal SAT35 terminates the uh, <coughs> terminates translation with a nonsense mutation. As a result, ADE1 is not synthesized and the strain accumulates a <coughs> metabolic intermediate that gives it a red color. On the other hand, in the strain called Psi plus, sub-35 forms amyloid fibrils and the number of normal translation termination factor is reduced. Therefore, ribosomes often pass through this nonsense mutation to proceed with translation and synthesize the normal ADE1 product. As a result, the strain does not accumulate this red intermediate product uh, uh, does not accumulate this red intermediate product and is white in color. This experimental system was used to show that amyloid fiber structure and phenotype are closely related. Sub-35 forms a different amyloid fiber structure depending on the temperature during nucleation. At 4 degrees Celsius, the fibers are thin and fragile. At 25 and 37 degrees Celsius, thick and robust fibrils are formed. Each fibril self-replicate. Fibril elongation rate and fragmentation efficiency differ in the fibril structure. Fibrils at 4 degrees Celsius elongate faster and fragment more frequently. Because of the high steel content and the fast fibril elongation, aggregation efficiency is higher than higher and the phenotype appears uh, stronger result in white colonies on the other hand fibers at 25 and 37 degrees celsius have slow a slow fiber elongation and a low fragmentation efficiency resulting in lower aggregation efficiency, weaker phenotypic appearance, and pink colonies. Such a high correlation, be high correlation between the steric structure of aggregate and the phenotype has recently been reported in human neurodegenerative diseases. These electron micrographs and NMR results show that fibril structure derived from amyloid beta in the brain 
differs among patients with different Alzheimer's disease symptoms. Parkinson's disease, multiple system atrophy, and Levy body dementia also differ from each other in the structure of alpha synuclein fibrils. Similar reports can be found in tau. Uh, basal, co basal cortical degeneration, Alzheimer's disease, PICS disease, and the chronic traumatic encephalopathy define the combination of tau splicing variants that make up the fibrils and the three dimensional structure of tau. Conversely, it has also been reported that introducing different fiber <coughs> structure into the organism may result in different symptoms. When samples of A beta 40 and A beta 42 aggregates in the presence or absence of SDS were injected into mice, plaque size and density, its density differs depending on the aggregation conditions. When alpha synuclein fibrils de derived from Parkinson's disease, multiple system atrophy, <coughs> Levy body dementia were injected into rats and simultaneously overexpressed with human alpha synuclein, the viability of the viability of dopaminergic neurons differed by the injected fiber types. Since symptoms are closely related to the structure of aggregates, it is essential to elucidate the structure and its dynamics, its dynamics during the aggregation process. Structural analysis of amyloid proteins and their aggregates has been revealed by X-ray, NMR, NM, and cryo-EM. These techniques can all analyze the structure with atomic, uh, atomic size spatial resolution and have a very large impact in the research field. On the other hand, the structural models usually obtained by these methods are static images. In addition, these structure analysis techniques require the structure of the new molecules comprising the sample be uniform. The aggregation, amyloid aggregation process is an equilibrium reaction, and there can be multiple types of aggregates at the same time. However, as shown in this high-speed FM movie, oligomers coexist in addition to fibrils indicating that multiple aggregates with different structures exist simultaneously in the amyloid aggregation reaction. The movie on the right side also shows that there are also, there are also oligomers that disaggregate. As you know, kinetic analysis is performed by measuring the fluorescence intensity of cyoflavin for the accumulation of cross-beta structures. Labeling with fluorescence dyes is also used for single molecule observation of amyloid fiber elongation using total internal reflection fluorescence microscopy. However, fluorescence does not reveal the protein structure itself. This is a summary on structural dynamics analysis. Conventional structure, conventional structural analysis can reveal three-dimensional structure at atomic re level resolution, but it is essentially static and requires sample made up of molecules of uniform structure. In amyloid aggregation, aggregate molecules of various structures including transient structures, exist simultaneously, so it is not always possible to analyze the strict structure of all aggregates. 
the kinetic scan be revealed by single, mo fluorescence, single molecule fluorescence observation, but fluorescence dyes cannot reveal the protein conformation itself. High speed FM can reveal structure and dynamics in a single technique. High speed FM uses a small contributor than conventional FM in order to provide fast feedback without damaging the sample. I have focused my high speed FM observations on amyloid aggregation. This movie sh shows this movie shows an aggregation of A beta 142. The low molecular weight fraction was put into the high speed FM sample chamber and the movie capturing started immediately. Initially many spherical aggregates and a small amount of fibr fibrillar structures were observed. After a short time, many short fibrils adhere to the st stage and go into longer fibrils. In this study, we found structurally distinct fibrils. Spiral fibrils have a periodicity in height from the stage. On the other hand, straight fibrils have no such periodicity. The growth mode of these fibrils was perfectly consistent with the conventional seed dependent growth model. However, another type, the hybrid type, cannot be explained by conventional mechanism alone. Hybrid type fibrils have both helical and straight sections within a single fibril single fiber. In this movie, we can see, see that the fiber grows in the spiral mode, then change to the straight mode, and then to the spiral mode. The chymograph on the right was made by li lining up each frame of the animation of the left. The pitch of the spiral portion of the spiral and the hybrid fibers was about 100 nanometer. The growth rate of the fiber differed at the both ends, indicating that the uptake efficiency of the native conformers differed at both ends. We explored whether the kinet kinetics of fi fiber elongation dif differ between spiral and straight types. Detailed analysis of the chyme graphs showed a clear stop and stop and go repetition at the first end. The duration of stop and duration and the distance of go show a first order, first order exponential distribution yielding the time constants shown in the model on the right. Fiber ends can be in two states, pod states in which the native conformer cannot be taken up, and the growing state uh, it can be taken up. The duration of the stop state is two times shorter. Two times shorter for spiral mode, spiral fiber. The duration of the growing state is about the same for both. However, due to due to the different growth rates, the growing length differed significantly between the two. We next examined the mechanism of formation of hybrid type fibrils. We speculated that fibril ends 
have structural fluctuations. Basically, fiber growth, growth follows the conventional seed dependent model. However, we hypothesize the fiber ends switch to different structure and hybrid type fibers are produced. If this theory is correct, this switching reaction should be influenced by the sur surrounding physicochemical conditions. Therefore, we observed fiber elongation with the same ionic strength but different electrolyte, electrolyte types. In the buffer containing sodium chloride, A beta 42 formed spiral fibers. On the other hand, in potassium chloride buffer, A beta 42 frequently switched between helical and a spiral and straight growth modes within the same fibrils, forming hybrid type fibrils. These graphs show uh, these graphs show the statistical analysis. In both conditions, there were there was no significant difference in fiber length, but fiber type and mode, growth mode, differed. The buffer solution containing potassium chloride increased the frequency of straight growth mode and hybrid type fibrils. Next, uh, some amino proteins such as alpha synuclein have molecular variants with different post translational modifications, such as splicing variants, oh, sorry, splicing variants, ubiquitination, phosphorylation, and truncation, and mutant. Besides these biochemical variants, there are also physical chemically distinct variants such as membrane bound membrane bound variants and variants in acidic and neutral regions. These variants have more than 70% homology and can be aggregated. However, it is unclear how the self-replication reaction is affected by co-aggregation. Here is repre representative data movies of fibrils prepared with fam familiar Parkinson di uh, Parkinson disease mutant E forty six K alpha synuclein under weakly acidic conditions, taking up mon monomers of different types. The fibrosid have a helical structure. The movie at the bottom right shows the self-seeding conditions for incorporation of E46K monomer under weakly acidic conditions. This condition quickly elongated the same structure as the seed. Here, the upper right movie with the pH set to neutral. Set to neutral. and the lower left movie with the wild type monomer incorporated wild type monomer incorporated while the pH remains weakly acidic condition show a decrease in the fiber elongation rate. Basically the same structures as the seed elongating under these conditions However, in the upper right movie, some fibrils elongated thin structure, thin structure that were not uh, that were not spiral. 
in the upper left condition in the upper left condition uh, both pH and monomer were changed uh, no fibers elongated in summary uh, compared to self seeding in cross seeding the elongation rate decreased accelerated or stopped and sometimes structures different from the seed were elongated next i will present a high speed fm observation of the purium model east sub 35 as shown here there are five rays along with spherical aggregates and the fiber is elongated with occasional fragmentation. The fragmented fibers elongated as new seeds, resulting in a large number of new fibers around the original fibers. Each fiber elongated in one direction. Looking more closely at the five wheels and globular aggregates, we notice that a black space, black space between the aggregates is always maintained. This space differs in size between inter inter oligomer inter globular aggregates and inter fibril globular aggregate. This result suggested that there was a small substance between aggregates between aggregates and fibers that moved at the speed uh, at <coughs> sorry uh, this result suggested that there was a small substance between aggregates and fibers that moved at a speed that could not be uh, captured by high speed FM and that this substance differed between aggregates and fibrils. Therefore, we observe the spherical aggregates and fibrils in more detail and found intrinsically disordered regions extending from the core, core structure of the aggregate and moving. These results indicate that globular aggregates and fibers have a core structure and intrinsically disordered regions, and that the core and the intrinsically disordered regions are diff different in both, indicating that structural change, structure change is necessary for the transition from globular aggregates to fibers. We then observe the process of sub-35 monomer and the oligomer formation. The movie on the left shows the sub-35 monomer. We found that there are two chains of, the, of different lengths extending and moving around in two directions from the spherical structure. We put the monomer into, into the sample chamber and continue to observe and measure the aggregate core size. Aggregates of 1.7 nanometer appeared by about 40 minutes, then were replaced by aggregates of 3 to 4 nanometer, which remained throughout the observation time. This slide shows the schematic of the sub-35 aggregation process. Monomers with two intrinsically disordered regions and one spherically, spherically folded structure assemble into 1.7 nanometer and 3 to 4 nanometer oligomers. These oligomers do not directly form fibrils. 
fibrous with a core structure and intrinsically disordered region that differ from the oligomer elongate in one direction while incorporating the monomer. Next, we present the results of high-speed FM observation of IAPP associated with type 2 diabetes. This study was done in collaboration with Professor Lam's group. In this study, fibrous seeds, fibrous seeds uh, were pre attached to the stage and then monomeric IAPP was added in the presence or absence of an aggregation inhibitor. Without aggregation inhibitors, the adherent fiber is elongated and new new fibers could be seen adhered to the stage and elongating. These newly attached and elongated fibers correspond to de novo nucleation. Thus, we can distinguish between fiber seeding reaction and de novo nucleation. In the presence of PMAQA polymer, both elongation of pre attached both elongation of pre attached fi fibers and the new fiber formation was stopped. In the presence of SMAQA polymer, globular aggregates increased. In the SMA, SMA EA polymer, this polymer, sorry, yeah. this polymer neither, neither inhibited the novel nucleation nor seed elongation. Here are some high-speed FM observations by other groups. Uh, Dr. Tashiro et al. found that when external force is applied to oligomeric evator aggregates, by increasing the force with, with the probe contact the sa sample during scanning, the self-replicating fib fibers elongate. So they propose that these oligomeric aggregates are metastable and the step into fibrils proceeds in external force dependent manner. Dr. Feng et al. have performed kinetic analysis of Eveta 42 aggregation intermediates as they interact with each other. They showed that they showed that the rate of binding and dissociation differs depending on the type of aggregation intermediates. In this study, the authors prepared photochemically cross-linked stable A beta oligomers and observed the structural dynamics of the trimer, pentamer, and heptamer by high-speed FM. 
the trimer did not change its spherical conformation, the pentamer moved between two states, spherical and dumbbell-shaped. The heptamer moved between three states, spherical. dumbbell shape. And three spheres connected forms. These results suggest that in the a beta 42 oligomer, two or three molecules of monomers make one spherical domain. High speed FM can also observe interactions between amyloid proteins and lipids. In this paper, the authors prepared A beta toxic oligomers and observed their effects on lipid while varying the, their lipid composition. In the presence of gangliosa GM1 and cholesterol, and addi in addition to phosphatidylcholine and sphingomyelin, the oligomers disrupted lipid membrane. In IAPP, there have been studies observing the co-aggregation of full-length peptides and partial fragments. The author co-aggregated partial fragments corresponding to each of the two beta strands, two beta strands that make up protofilaments of IAPP fibrils with the full-length peptides. Co-aggregation altered the structure of aggregates and fibrils, and the kinetics of fiber formation. The figure on the left is a high speed FM image of aggregation with full length peptides alone. The co aggregation with partial peptides increased the number of small non fibrillar aggregates, made fibrils thinner, and increased the stop period of fibril elongation. This is a final summary. Uh, differences in the structural dynamics of amyloid proteins correlate with individual disease symptoms. Conventional protein structure analysis provides only a static imagery. Molecular levels tracks the dynamics of a single protein molecule, but do not reveal the protein structure. Uh, amyloid proteins are inherently disordered and assemble into oligomers and fibrils of various structures. Aggregates of various structures are mixed together and we, uh, we are unable to st stably separate and purify them. High speed FM visualizes the structural dynamics of individual aggregates, and high speed FM can identify aggregation processes that can be targeted by aggregation inhibitors. The research presented here was supported by these collaborators and funds. Thank you for your kind attention.